Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to Goal Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte. We are taking a look today at the New York Islanders and how they have created a goalie paradise from one of the worst teams in the NHL and the worst defensive team in, in history of the league and goals against. And now they are the New York Islanders, the new brand in New York Islanders. We'll be taking a look at that in this video. So, Let's get right into it. So the New York Islanders, as you guys know, for the most part, I am a big New York Islanders fan. If you couldn't tell from the back and everything else, which you guys are pretty rough in the comments, but that's all right. I don't mind. It's it's quite entertaining. But the New York Islanders have created a goalie's paradise. And you may be wondering, what does that even mean? Like, what does that entail? Well, you probably know a little bit, especially if your team's like the New York Rangers. I'm, I'm just saying, just saying. I mean, the Islanders have shut you out pretty badly this year. But that is part of the Islanders' game plan. And they seem to do very well against shutting down other teams' best players, especially when they're young teams like the, Island, like the Rangers or the Devils in particular or the Buffalo Sabres. The Islanders are very good at shutting the young teams down because they frustrate you. They don't give you much space. You really have to fight for every inch in front of the net. They don't let you get to the front of the net for the most part. And you can't score goals. And the Islanders make it very difficult. And we've seen that from the Islanders to the point where it's become their culture. As a very defensive-minded team, they don't give up a lot of goals. They don't score a lot of goals. But they score goals when they get the opportunities. The Islanders may only get three or four opportunities a game. They will score on those two or three opportunities, and that's it. And they, they make sure they score when it counts. So the Islanders are in a weird situation where let's – so let's go back in the Wayback Machine. We're going way back to 2000, okay? So the Islanders' goaltending at that time was a lot different. They had Kevin Weeks and Steve Valiquette, as well as Roberto Luongo, okay? So that season, Kevin Weeks had a 900 save percentage, Steve Valiquette had a 949 save percentage, and Roberto Luongo had a 904 save percentage. Since then, the Islanders have not had a goaltending system like that. And even then, it was not a great goaltending tandem because it was only it was three goaltenders, you know, and it wasn't a full on um it wasn't it wasn't the real deal. I mean, you look at Valaket, he only played six games. Kevin Weeks played 36, and Luongo played 24, so it was pretty split between the I mean, obviously Valaket only played six games, but you know, it, they didn't play a full season. Let's just put it that way. So since then, the goaltending had a huge dry spell. And we'll get into that. So the Islanders have had a lot of goaltenders. Chris Terreri, Rick DiPietro, Garth Snow, Chris Od Osgood, Wade Dublowitz, Mike Dunham, Joey McDonald, Peter Menino, Jan Denny, Dwayne Rollison, Martin Biron. Kevin Poulin, Al Montoya, Nathan Lawson, Miko Koskinen, yes, the Oilers Koskinen, Anders Nilsson, Evgeny Nabokov, Michael Neuberth, Chad Johnson, Yaroslav Harak, Thomas Grice, Christopher Gibson, Jean Gabriel, uh, Jean Francois Berube, Robin Leonard, Semyon Varlamov, and Ilya Sorokin. That is the last 20 years of goaltending for the New York Islanders. And out of a lot of those goaltenders from Martin Biaran, all the way up until Evgeny Nabakov. Evgeny Nabakov, for about five or six years, was the only New York Islanders goaltender to have a above 900 save percentage that entire season. Yes, only one. And even after Nabakov, Neuwirth, Johnson, Neuwirth and Johnson both had a sub 900 save percentage. Now you can say, oh, those their team stats, whatever, this and that. That's for goals against average. I'm talking about save percentage. The amount of shots that the goaltender saves on a given night over the long term of a season. But even with Christopher Gibson and, uh, uh, what is it, Halak and Grice had a 913 and a 915 save percentage respectively, which is a very good stat line, okay? Then Gibson had a 904, but again, he didn't play in as many games as the other two. Uh, and then Robin Leonard, and since Robin Leonard, the Islanders goaltending has been just unreal. You look at the last three goaltenders the Islanders have had. 
Robin Leonard, a 930 save percentage. That's in his career with the Islanders. Semyon Varlamov, a 921 save percentage with the New York Islanders. Ilya Sorokin, his first NHL season coming over from Russia, a 918 save percentage. But like I said, before, you know, the Islanders had their uh, changing of Barry Trotz, Lou Lamorello, Piero Greco, this was a totally different team. And yes, Evgeny Nabokov was in there, but we know Nabokov was a good goaltender before he came to the Islanders. And he actually was very disappointed, you know, the Islanders, okay, so if you don't remember that whole story, there was a time with the Islanders where there was a lot of talk the Islanders were getting disrespected around the league. And this was in, I guess, 2011, 2012, maybe even 2015. And the Islanders were getting hit. And, and this goes back to a video I made back last year or earlier this year, the fight night against the Pittsburgh Penguins. Make sure to check that video out because I talk a little bit more of the changing of the guard for the Islanders. And that was kind of the change where the Islanders were from the misfit clown of a team on Long Island to becoming a playoff team that started to develop something. Now, obviously, things changed again when John Tavares left. The Islanders haven't really looked back since John Tavares left. And they had that whole prove everybody wrong mentality it's worked out pretty well for the Islanders. The only problem is, I don't know how that's going to work out this season because the Islanders are no longer the underdog. You you went to the conference final last year. The year before that, you went to the second round. The year before that, you did you go to the second round? The Islanders have been a consistent playoff team now for a couple years. So that whole underdog story, it, it seems to be wearing off a little bit, but the Islanders have the same system in place. And that's really the key thing. And... You know, obviously the Islanders have gone through a lot with this situation. Like I said, Nabokov wanted to reject the Islanders claiming him on waivers. It was so bad. The, he was like, I do not want to go to the Islanders. They suck. You know, and he was with some good teams in the past at that point. He was with, I believe, the Tampa Bay Lightning. He had been with the San Jose Sharks. He had been with a couple of teams that were prestigious franchises. And now to go to the Islanders designated to a pretty much a, a black hole and the Islanders had turned that around and like I said when Barry Trotz came in that changed the entire tale and you may be wondering what how did that happen well first off the Islanders got rid of Garth Snow the general manager they bring in their new guy they bring in Lou Lamorello from the Toronto Maple Leafs a hit rich history of good culture and just a very tight he runs a tight ship, Lou Lamorello, and there's plenty of videos on YouTube talking about Lou Lamorello. He doesn't allow guys to wear, you know, any kind of facial hair during the regular season. They have to have short hair. He made Tyler Bozak change his hairstyle in Toronto. That's how, you know, crazy it is. Yes, I would have to cut my luxurious flow if I was with the Islanders under Lou Lamorello. Uh, thank God I'm not in that suit. I, maybe I'd sacrifice the hair to be with Lou Lamorello at that point. But that's besides the point. The Islanders have a really tight ship that has been run by Lou Lamorello. He brings in Barry Trotz. Barry Trotz brings in his goalie coach, Mitch Korn, from the Washington Capitals. And he has a lot to do with the success of Braden Holpe in Washington. And if you may be wondering why, maybe Braden Holpe had a little bit of a weaker season this year with Vancouver. That loss of Mitch Korn, he kind of lost his footing in Washington once Mitch Korn and Barry Trotz left the Washington Capitals. And he had a strong connection with Mitch Korn at that point. The Islanders also brought in, uh, well, Mitch Korn brought in Piero Greco, who was also with Lou Lamorello with the Toronto Marlies in the American Hockey League. He worked his way up from the OHL up to the AHL with the Marlies and then became the goalie coach of the New York Islanders. So you have a combination of Barry Trotz, who brought in Mitch Korn from Washington, and Mitch Korn from Washington brought in Piero Greco from Toronto. And that three-headed monster... Barry Trotz's defensive-minded system alongside Mitch Korn and Piero Greco probably being of the, the highest prestige level in terms of goalie coaching in the NHL has created a farm of New York Islanders goaltenders that is really unmatched at this point. And I remember at the time I was like, okay, those are cool hires. Like, it's good. But as an Islander fan, I never realized how important those kind of coaches really are. And for the New York Islanders, we've seen how big of a difference that has made. The Islanders are a different franchise at this point. Like I said, they were the laughing stock, fish sticks, uh, 
84, whatever jokes you want to throw at the Islanders. They were going to move to Kansas City. They were going to move to Hartford, to the the New York, out of all teams, the New York Rangers Farm Systems Stadium. Are you nuts? That would have been the ultimate. You know, that's a total degrade on the Islanders and their franchise. And now the Islanders are going to have their new home at the end of this year. I'm going to breathe a big sigh of relief once I step into Belmont Park Arena because the Islanders are officially a legitimate franchise. Not only do they have their new home, not only do they have the great coaching staff and everything else, but just maybe, just maybe the New York Islanders will bring that Stanley Cup back home to Long Island. So guys, is this the year? I know it's been a rough couple weeks for the Islanders, especially with Washington, but we're talking about an Islanders team that in the grand scheme of things... They look different this year. You look at the records that Semyon Varlamov is breaking this year for shutout streaks. Ilya Sorokin, if he picks up another shutout here for the Islanders, will be the best, you know, the the most shutouts for a rookie goaltender in an NHL season. Remember, this is a shortened NHL season. And the Islanders goalie duo, in terms of shutouts, leads the NHL this season. And if they get one more shutout, will break the Islanders franchise record for a goalie duo in an entire season. An 82-game schedule, the Islanders will break that in a 60-65 game schedule this year. So guys, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Rangers fans, Devils fans, Flyers fans, Islander fans, any fans around the league. Let me know what you think of the New York Islanders. In the comment section down below, do you think the Islanders are for real this season? Or was there slip-ups this season with teams like Pittsburgh, Boston, and Washington? Enough for you to say this team will not go far in the postseason. And they did well against the Rangers and the Sabres and the Devils and even the Flyers to an extent. But they struggled against the Flyers too. Are they going to be good enough to beat some of these better teams in their division? Because this is the beast of the East division. Can they get past those first two rounds? Let me know down below. And if you guys like what we're doing here at Goal Line Hockey and want to see the latest news around the NHL, you guys know what to do. Make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and an even bigger subscribe down below. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching this video and let's go Islanders.